Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. And I have promised you guys, gosh, how many, how many weeks, months, I guess, talk about Gog of Magog, the Gog of Magog War. And partly this is inspired, too, from my wife's research uh, that she had done a little while back on the, the usage of the word thousand or thousands, kilios, or Kilias, or Chilias, actually, depending on how you pronounce the Greek word there. And it is a subject that I wanted to dive into myself because of some of the things that I know from my own research, from, from a different, different aspect as well. Uh, and a subject that I wanted to present to you more objectively for you to look at and to consider, especially in light of the... Uh, many revelations that we've been sharing with you about different passages that have been fulfilled in the past. Uh, now, this is not necessarily a scripture that's already fulfilled, but it speaks of those things that have happened as well as those things that are going to happen. And I realize when you get into, uh, especially in the translation of words that affect doctrinal views, uh, this really causes a lot of people to go into a cognitive distances uh, that basically just shatters their, their, their whole theology. And, you know, and it becomes very difficult for people. And I understand that. Uh, I mean, listen, we're going through these things ourselves, uh, but I would rather know the truth than to believe a lie. And, uh, and you got to remember, Schofield, really, this whole Schofield agenda has brought Christianity to a place of rewriting practically everything the early church fathers believed and taught uh, down through the years. So if you would bear with me on this, and again, I'm not saying this emphatically, this is exactly the way it's got to be. I want you to just look at some things here objectively, especially because there's so much information being shared with me uh, on not just by the Lord and revealing things, but also uh, things that are beginning to line up even from intel sources that I hear about things that are coming. A lot of disclosures are being made. Uh, not everything's being made public, but a lot of disclosures are, are going on. And so I want to be able to see if we can cross the T's and dot the I's on some of these things where it would make a little bit more sense there. So bear with me. We're going to get into this. First, I'm going to just read a little bit here, and then we're going to, we're going to start doubling back to, the, to Revelation chapter 20 here uh, more and more as we look at other scriptural evidences as well. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, Satan, and bound him, you know, King James has a thousand years, and cast him into a bottomless pit, shut him up, and set, up a, set, set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God in which, uh, excuse me, for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. They lived and reigned with Christ. Again, they put on there a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not until the, until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. All right. Now, we, it continues on. It goes in, uh, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of saints about and the beloved city. The fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. 
And the devil that deceived them was cast into a lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, I don't know. Many of you, maybe you have had issues a little bit with this as well. But I can tell you early on as a believer, I never could understand how that Jesus would reign with us here on earth, which there is, by the way, there is no mention that he comes to reign here on earth with us. But he's reigning in heaven. He sat down on the right hand of his father. Earth is his footstool. But it never made sense to me why we would have a beautiful millennial reign. Everything seems to be wonderful for a thousand years. And now we've got to go through all this all over again. Now we've got to be tempted by the devil and all these kind of problems all start over again. So in the back of my mind, even at one time as being more of a Zionist futurist type of believer, uh, times past, I have to clarify, that was one thing that bothered me. Because it just didn't seem to line up with the scripture. And so when I first began to hear about this word here, uh, chilioi, and even Blue Letter Bible has it on here, plural of uncertain affinity. Uh, and then I found that I wished I had not have closed up. There's, there, there are biblical dictionaries that do not translate this as a singular thousand, but thousands in the plural. So I did, just as my wife has done, I went and conducted my own study as well for chilioi and chilias. Chilias is what we see that has been placed in the place of chilioi in a lot of more of the... Uh, uh, later later uh, manuscripts, Greek manuscripts. But scholars will tell you that chilioi was the original, original word being used there. Now, I ran across this guy here. His name is Dwayne Benson. Love to contact this guy. Um, he really, he was commenting on an article from Creation Concept, uh, about thousands, the, the, you know, this word thousands or the word thousand. And he really had a very logical, um, well, very scholastic points that he made in his, uh, in his comedy. He says, one more mention in the original manuscripts regarding Revelation 20 to verses 1 through 7 and Peter 3, 8. Most scholars and theologians agree, chilioi, was found and at some later date was substituted the Greek word chilias. Helioi is an adjective, a plural article requiring a quantifier to identify the number of thousands in reference when used without a quantifier. As in Revelation 20, 1 through 7, Peter 3, 8, is then as undefined number of thousands, meaning more than 1,000. Chilias is a noun of plural article, and chilioi requires a quantifier to identify the number of thousands. As an example, chilias, used without a quantifier in Revelation 5.11, describes thousands and thousands of angels. You will also note Strong's Dictionary identifies this chilias as an NT5507 for the word chilioi. What was Strong trying to tell you? All right, so what we're dealing with in the book of Revelation, as he uh, so eloquently puts it here, is that you have to have a quantifier in order to determine the number of thousands, and we don't have that in the book of Revelation. All right, so in, rea in, in reality, and by the way, there is a translation. I wonder if I have it up here on my screen, just kind of scanning across here to see real quick. I don't have it on there. Maybe, maybe the article mentions that as well. I think he does in here. Uh, yes. Uh, Tischendorf, the eighth edition. This was translated, I think, in the 1800s there. Uh, he actually translates it thousands of years as chilioi as a plural and not 
as it's been changed out later and put in, in the place of that word there. Uh, so there, there are different resources out there, but uh, because you have to keep in mind there's been so much effort to try to steer everybody into accepting a, a Zionist Schofield uh, Darby doctrine here that uh, they've really removed a lot of things to keep us from knowing what's going on. And so if then if we go back to the book of Revelation and we begin to look at this and we see here, you know, the, the serpent is cast, the devil bound him a thousand years and put thousands of years. And then you have to think about it. Look, think about all the scriptures. Uh, what is it? Is it Luke, I believe? Let me see. Where we tread. Let's see. And, and, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, The Lord, even the devils are subject unto us, unto us through thy name. And he said to them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and power over power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be any by any means hurt you notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven in that in that hour Jesus rejoiced let me, let me just back up again behold I will give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall be any by any means hurt you Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. So you see, Satan is already bound. He's already been put in that prison. And another, let me, let me go back down to, to where this guy makes some comments here, because he also made a couple of other very interesting comments there that I would like to share with you. He mentions here, uh, regarding your second paragraph and the mention of the martyred saints only, this is, a com this is common as a statement about the section concerning resurrection of saints to reign with Christ for thousands of, thousands of years. Reading, this sequence of the verse it announces... He's going to take Revelation 20, verse 4. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or their hands. And they came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Note the first no, first, this verse says, I saw those with the authority to judge. Now, the thing that came to my mind immediately is, if you remember, like the, uh, you have the 24 elders that sit on the seats judging in the book of Revelation. And what is that? Being your 12 patriarchs as well as the 12 apostles. Of course, we know Judas was replaced, and many believe it was Paul that replaced Judas, even though they, they, they chose one themselves. He goes on to say, And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. Now you have been introduced to both groups. And next this verse says, in verse 4, They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark in their foreheads or their hands. Now that we have identified both groups of saints, it says about all of these saints in the following verse, verse 5 that is, they came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, we know all of the upright and righteous of the Old Testament promise came to life and reigned with Christ for, a th for thousands of years, not just a thousand. The Greek word chelioi found in the original manuscript is an adjective of plural article found without a quantifier, meaning this was an undefined number of thousands and translates properly in English as thousands of years. And he is exactly right in that statement that he's making right here. All right, now keep in mind though, when they come to life, what's he, what is that group there speaking about in the first place? Matthew chapter 28, when the resurrection came, what did we read in Matthew 28? Many... Many of them that were asleep in the dust of the earth rose up and were 
saw by those that were alive. So we literally have a fulfillment of that at the time of Jesus Christ when he's here on the earth. Because all it's doing is kind of it's kind of going back and showing you those that are reigning with Christ. And not to mention, do, do we really think that Jesus is only going to reign for a thousand years on the earth and that's it? Jesus has been reigning ever since he left this earth. It's been over 2,000 years and he's going to continue to reign. So my point is, and this is what I'm really wanting to drive home in this this message here that are to, for, for consideration. This Gog of Magog war is not something that's going to be happening a thousand years from now. We're about to see this happen now. This is on our doorstep. All right? So that's why I wanted to, to, to bring this to your attention. Now, let me take you to Matthew 24. And just as a reminder, we know Jesus actually covers a big span of time in Matthew 24. Some of this is already fulfilled. Like, for example, when he says, when you see Jerusalem compassed about with armies, right? Let me back up. We're going to come down here to verse 35 in just a moment here. Um, and again, he, uh, let's see. For the, the, let's see. There shall rise false Christ, false prophets shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. We're, we're dealing with that right now. Uh, uh, let's see, back up a little further. Uh, then let him which are in, be in Judea flee. Uh, let's back it up. Let's see. Okay. Then he says, And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When you therefore, when you, okay, when you, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, readeth, let him understand. That's important to know. He's talking to his own apostles and those that followed him at that moment. That's why he says, and when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. So the abomination of desolation, according to Jesus, was going to happen in their lifetime. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. All right, but pray you, you that your flight not be in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. This was something that was fulfilled in the days when Titus, the Roman general, came down. And Titus didn't just, it wasn't just the Roman general. When they talk about the nations were, were, would com, uh, compass Jerusalem, Titus brought bands from all over the Middle East, all these different Arab nations that hated the Jewish people. And so we saw this being fulfilled then. But when we get down here to verse 35, now we start... Uh, we start to get into issues that are going to happen very soon. He says, Verily I say unto you, verse 34, this generation shall not pass to all these things be fulfilled. That was up there. The generation he was in. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. All right. Now, and I mentioned to you just recently about this right here. Very, very startling thought. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known, right? If the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. So, most people take this as a rapture verse here, but the thing is, could it also be a theft? Could it be a kidnapping? 
You know, he's already telling you, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And in Noah's day, they were eating and drinking and marrying, given in marriage. This is when the fallen angels came down to this earth and cohabitated with the human beings on the earth and bore children into them. Ended up becoming giants. Okay, what were they drinking and eating? Well, according to the book of Enoch, which was part of the Dead Sea Scrolls and considered a canon of scriptures also quoted by um, New Testament as well, they were eating human flesh and drinking human blood. And you know, as I said to you, and this is one of the reasons I really wanted to go into this, is because when we see Jesus give us the analogy of how evil things are going to be on this earth, not to mention we find out too, I believe in Genesis, you know, all the, 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 the technology that was being shared with Cain's children among them as well back in those days. And look at where we are now. Look at the technology, the advances. You know, fiber optic cable that you have that comes in your home that runs your internet was actually found aboard a aircraft, a, a, an extraterrestrial aircraft. And when I speak of extraterrestrials, always understand aliens, whatever. I look at this as fallen angels, devils. These are archons that are inhabiting other planets as well as those that are imprisoned here. You know, I did the I did a message a little while back on YouTube. It's been quite a while back now about the fallen angels are imprisoned in Antarctica. And that might be something you might want to consider to look at eventually as well. Um, let me just see if I can pull it up real quick for you so you can know which message I'm actually talking about here. But uh, Good it is. Yeah, here it is. The fallen angels in prison in Antarctica and. I would not even mind updating this a little bit myself, but it was just because looking at the book of Enoch and talking about their prison where they were at. Now, some of the things that have been disclosed to me since then um, about, and, 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 and I was actually asking the question because of those that believe in flat earth and those that believe in hollow earth and those that believe in just a spherical earth, things like that. And, and, and it was told to me that basically all the different camps, are none of them are, are fully right in what they believe, but some have some truth, etc. Uh, flat earth, though, no, there's no evidence that supports it. I had found in the, and there's many different places we could look at, even in our own canon, but in the Hebrew Matthew, where Jesus literally goes to the Betan uh, of the earth, the belly of the earth is where he goes. And this is, this is where, you know, when he died, he goes to the belly of the earth. And that's one thing that made me ask about that. And again, I'm sharing this stuff with you. Objective. I don't say you have to believe this or anything. Um, Sometimes I don't know if I can really believe all these things, but uh, but it's in light of the fact of what we're about to face. I think people need to be aware of the things that are going on. But I was told that there were two races that live within the earth itself, and they're not able to come out. Um, I've been told about there are a group of um, beings that look very human, about 300 representatives that are on the earth that are related to the ones that are in the earth, but they won't speak about them. And it makes me wonder if the ones that are within the earth are part of the fallen angels that were imprisoned inside the earth. Um, just like I shared with you not too long ago about this movie that came out with this year, the underwater, I think is the call, what they call it, where the oil rig platform drills down too deep and opens uh, uh, to another. They thought it was like a chasm in there. Actually, from what I was told from the intel, that, and I knew about this even before the movie ever came out, that uh, no, they actually drilled into the sea that's within the earth there. And that is where a large of the reptilian races, or re, not reptilian, but well, reptiles, yes, live in that area there. 
and they were able to come through. Um, but I don't want to get into that issue right now. The point being, even what they call reptilian races, I was told that there is a massive city of them underneath Los Angeles and that they have catacombs all throughout the earth. And then I have other intel sources uh, through Pentagon sources there that are talking about that as the, all these climatic things that are happening on the earth that soon we're about to see a lot of these hideous sights. And I was told that, especially the reptilians, they will, it is a terrifying experience to see them. They're, they look similar to a human, but more like a lizard skin and that... Uh, they're very muscular. They said it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger on steroids at the peak of his day. Uh, very fast, etc. Just throwing some things out here for you to think about is all. All right. But at any rate, getting back to the scriptural part of this is that Jesus said as it was in the days of Noah, it's going to be the same way in this day. And not only do we have that, but we have, as we were reading here in Revelation. So let's, let's back up and let's look at this again. Satan has put that old serpent, and keep in mind, you have, well, actually, the reptilians, and then there is a draconian, which is a serpent race, not exactly the same. Uh, they're a little different. And this is from what I understand that the elite of Israel are working with these the serpent type race. He cast him in the bottomless pit. He shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till, the thou th till thousands of years should be fulfilled. So we've been over 2,000 years and in reality, because Christ came, the deception was able to be removed. You see, Israel was blind as blind could be. Jesus clearly tells us this. And he had to come to awaken the people to what the truth was. That both the house of Israel and the house of Judah had also mingled their seed amongst these races, the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Perzite, the Jebusite, the, 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 the Moabites, etc. They had mingled their seeds. Now, the Moabites were not mingled in the, in the early years there. That came later down the road. And I would also probably argue that not, well, no, I couldn't say that because if you go back and you look at um, uh, Anak, A-N-A-K, not Enoch, Anak, who was a son of one of the fallen angels, when it mentions about those other nations that, that his sons, his sons were the Hittites, Canaanites, Perzites, and the Jebusites, all right, they were all descendants are hybrid children in the first place. So all this mingling had got it went on, and then many times I've shared with you from the book of Ezra how that even the priest, when they were in captivity in Babylon, they also ended up cohabitating with the daughters uh, and the sons of these people there amongst the uh, the peoples of the land, and it wasn't the Babylonians. It was the Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, or, or, excuse me, yeah, the Ammonites, etc. And so they, and the scripture says they mingled the Holy See. I've shared with you many times from the Dead Sea Scrolls, exact same things on these things, right? So, Satan was unable to deceive the nations no more for those thousands of years. And that ever since the revelation that Jesus Christ brought to us and through his apostles for the last 2,000 years, we have been ruling and reigning with Christ. Not to say that there's not false prophets that arise. Jesus already told us that was going to happen. They, they entered in among us, like Jude said, right? Uh, also, Second Peter. Let's look at that one real quick, see? but chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanliness and despise government, not government like you think, it's not that word there, presumptuous are they that self-willed and they're not afraid to speak evil. That word dignity should be of the worship, the true worship of Christ, and that, and that dominion is what that should be, government, which is Christ's dominion, 
whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not a railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to ride in the daytime. Spots they are in blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart, they have exercised with covetous practices cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of uh, Basor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Think of those ministers today that have done exactly that. They've sold you out. They allowed the Schofield Darby garbage to come in and to pollute. And they now are pushing you to go and support Israel completely. And this Talmudic ideology and putting you right back into the hands of Satan himself. No wonder why we read in the book of Revelation uh, chapter 13 when he says here, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Everything's given to him. Right? Everything. It was given unto him to make war with who? The saints. And to overcome them. And power was given unto them of, over all kindred, tongues, and nations. Notice that right there. The power is given unto them to make war with the saints. Now we're going into that Gog of Magog. See? <laughs> when the thousand year, or when the thousands of years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Who looses him? The Apostolic Reformation, evangelical leaders, messianic leaders, you're given the power back over to Satan. And shall go out to deceive the nations, which are the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth. That's another one. Talk about... <laughs> Do you real? Let, let, let me show you something on this right here. They went up on the breadth of the earth. All right, they went up. You got you to see this one right here. Revelation, that's where we're going to, right? Re Re Revelation 20. We want to talk about things that just seem to, uh, what verse were we in there? Verse 9. They went up on the breadth of the earth. They went up. There we go right there. To go up, arise, ascend. Jesus, according to the Hebrew Matthew, he went to the belly of the earth to bring those that were held captive. And now we have a revelation. They rise up. You ever think about to the scripture, and I think I have it up here. I forget exactly where it's at. I think maybe it's in Luke here. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We already read it just a moment ago. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. They're under your feet. They're right under your feet. That's where they've been bound until some nutcase decided to release them. Now, could we take that as a dimensional issue? Possibly. Possibly. All right? Let me show you another one here. Where is it? I, got, I think I got Mal. Here we go. Mal Zechariah. Oh, here we go. Malachi right here. Think about this one as well. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of... This, in your most Bibles, it's Malachi chapter 4. Hebrew doesn't have a, a chapter 4, so it continues on in verse 3. I think that would be around verse 4, 5, 6, maybe somewhere in there in chapter 4. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness, that's S-U-N, see, Shmi Shemesh Sadiq, Umarapeh shall arise with healing in his wings. The sun of righteousness. In other words, the brightness, the morning star. However you want to look at that, you could, you could think about it. Now, if you look at that just quickly, I'll just remind you, what did we have over here 
when they take a hold of the the uh, the, the not, they don't take a hold of the wing or, or excuse me the skirt of a Jewish man or. So he said that ten men shall take a hold out of all the language of the nation, shall even take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. All right? It doesn't say skirt. They take a hold of the bikinaf. Ish. Okay? The hiziko bikinaf ish yehudi lemor. They take a hold of the wing of the Jewish man, saying, Nelecha inchem. We hear God is with you. Now, yeah, that's plural. Why is that plural? That's his apostles. That's 120 in the upper room. Kishamanu, we have heard Elohim imchem. We heard that God is with you. Who's the God that's with them? That Jewish man that came, that they took a hold of his wing. That's what Malachi tells you about as well. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing. Not, not its, his wings. Okay, his wings, not its wings. And you should go forth and, and, and gamble or grow up as calves of a stall. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I do make, in, in the day that I do make, saith the Lord of hosts. So it's speaking of the time of, of the coming of Christ, when Christ came, when we were to take a hold of his wing, and because of what he did, it caused the wicked to become under the soles of your feet. But the point is, friends, that's all about to change. Because we are facing the Gog of Magog battle. And those thousands of years have come are coming to a conclusion. And it says here, they'll be gathering them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Notice, so what comes down and devours them? The fire. And you know, I, I have been laughed at, made fun of, and everything else because I talk about we're going to be having all kinds of meteorite showers and things like that and Asteroids coming down to hit the earth, they know that too. And yet, now uh, granted, timing, because I'm dealing with intel, it's not, I'm not dealing with the Lord telling me something, I'm just dealing with those that, that know things that are going to be happening. Um, and yet, more and more, we're seeing these things, right? This one here was the one that hit China the other a uh, couple of weeks back. Just massive uh, asteroid that came in. And then I got uh, friends that sent me this yesterday. I think that was uh, Havar that actually sent. Oh, whoa, whoa, actually had him. Uh, no. Um, polka, dot, po polka dot lady that sent me this one right here. And this is just debris falling. Uh, falling down. And this was in West Virginia. And, but you know, the, 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 the interesting thing is, friends, it's happening so frequently. So frequently. And if you really start paying attention, I did a little video just not too long ago where it's just one after another showing you different parts of the world. And as I, I double checked in with some friends there in the Intel community there, they told me, they said, it's, most of them are hitting the oceans and still falling more closer to the equator. But again, we're still getting more and more though that are not. And another one here again. Um, you know, and you got this one coming over as well. But everybody just brushing these things off. What's going to happen when it really comes in? Could that be the judgment? We know that God talks about he'd rain fire down out of heaven, the, the, the weight of a talent. The stones would be the weight of a talent. But you know, they've managed to, to create all these false doctrines and put people in all different kind, kind of camps and stuff to where they, they just don't seem to see it. And yet, Jesus tells you that was going to happen. And so I'm just blown away by the things that are going on. Let's see, I have a book of Acts up here as well. Let's see what, I, oh yeah, yeah, where Stephen's speaking here. Stephen, after, you know, he, he says to the Jewish people of that day, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised and heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted that they have slain them which shewed before the coming of the just one? 
of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and gnashed on him with their teeth, but being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. <laughs> oh, I forget exactly why I put Stephen up there, but it was for a reason there. I forget now. Let's, let's see. In the book of Romans, I also put up here. Oh, yeah, this was important as well. This has to do with the fact, if we go back, let me quickly, before I deal with uh, this here, Go back to the book of Revelation. And also I had Matthew here. Okay, we already did Matthew. Um, and that's backing up to where it says here. Let's see. Yet I saw thrones, and they that sat on them, judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, in which they had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads. They lived and reigned with Christ thousands of years, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousands of years were finished. This is the first resurrection. right? So now when you're looking at, say, for example, in the book of Romans, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is in the figure of him that was to come. All right, now let's drop down to verse 17. Uh, For by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. But notice, we reign with Christ even now. In the book of Hebrews, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than, treasure, than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect and the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not bearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And that is where we get, as the guy that wrote this comments in here on there about when he says, uh, you got the two different groups. See, they came to life and reigned with Christ thousands of years. That first part there that he shows you there in verse 5, right? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousands of years were finished, right? But let's see, verse 4 actually. Um, I saw, okay, in the word of God, we should worship the beast there. After that, he must be. See, so see, Satan is about to be loosed again. But when we looked at this here, see, even, even Moses, you know, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. You know, I don't know how much of this makes sense to you guys or not, but my point that I'm really wanting people to understand is that serpent, that devil, is about to be loosed. And the Gog of Magog war is going to happen sooner than what most people even could possibly imagine. And so, I, I, like I said, I, I say it as something for your consideration. I trust it will be a blessing to you and uh, in some way or another. And that we will have our lives truly hidden in Christ. That's the only way we're going to overcome what's coming on this earth. I'm Stephen Benoon with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research as well as Israeli News Live. We thank you. We thank you guys also for your, for your support uh, of the ministry here. If you want to help support the work we do, uh, of course, at the top of the video that you're watching now is our correct address. Uh, brother is going to actually help me get the address changed here on our website as well. But you can donate online as well. And I'll also include a link in the description for you to be able to do that with because sometimes people say they have a hard time donating online. But right across the top of the video, you can see our address on there. And, uh, and like, for example, I'll just show you because it's been on... Um, Good evening. Been on a lot of the more recent videos we've been doing here. We've... Uh, Good evening, Brent. Included, well, not in that one there, but uh, let me just see. I think it's good afternoon.
There we go, right there. So you have the current address here, Stephen Benoon, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Uh, and if you're wanting to contribute under the name of Danoon Institute, like you'll see on the bottom of the screen, you can do it that way as well, or you can do it in my own name, whichever way you would prefer to do that. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening. And we have to do some traveling today, so do be in prayer for us. Uh, we do appreciate your prayers greatly.